the nuclear emergency at the Fukushima plant in Japan could be approaching historic proportions. The French Authority of Nuclear Safety set off warning bells around the world when it declared the Fukushima disaster to be the second worst nuclear accident of all time. The Chernobyl disaster in the Soviet Union was at a level of seven out of seven. That's pretty bad. Three Mile Island, the worst nuclear accident in U.S. history, was a level five out of seven. ASN experts say in their opinion, Fukushima is now at a level six out of seven, worse than Three Mile Island. But what exactly does that mean? You've probably heard of both Three Mile Island and Chernobyl, but do you remember exactly what happened? It was a long time ago, so I think it helps to refresh the facts here, and these are the facts. Three Mile Island is a nuclear plant near Middletown, Pennsylvania, about 10 miles from Harrisburg. In March of 1979, the cooling system malfunctioned. The plant suffered a severe core meltdown, but it did not breach the containment structure. Some irradiated gas was vented from the plant, and pregnant women and children within a five-mile radius were told to evacuate. On the fourth day, there were new false fears that a hydrogen bubble had formed and that it could cause the plant to explode, which caused widespread panic, understandably so. But experts quickly determined that an explosion wasn't scientifically possible. The size of the bubble was reduced and the crisis ended. No one was hurt or sickened. The Pennsylvania Department of Health kept a register of 30,000 potentially affected people, but luckily found no evidence of long-term health effects. Now, Chernobyl was totally different. Chernobyl was a nuclear facility in the Ukraine, part of the former Soviet Union, about 430 miles from Moscow. In April of 1986, a reactor exploded. The reactor had no emergency containment structure, which is insanity. As a result, it released more than 400 times more radioactive fallout than an atomic bomb. If you think about that, that is unbelievable. The explosion itself killed two workers, 28 emergency workers died within just three months, and that was mostly from acute radiation sickness. In the end, 200,000 people were evacuated and relocated entirely. More than one million people in three countries are on a national register as potentially affected by radiation. In fact, about 4,000 cases of thyroid cancer have been diagnosed in people who were exposed as children. Resettlement to the outermost containment areas began last year, almost a quarter century after the accident happened. So what will be the fallout of F Fukushima? What will that be like? Obviously, there's a wide gulf between the severity of Three Mile Island and Chernobyl. So what are the long-term threats of radiation and contamination in this case? Well, my next guest can help answer those questions. Joining me now is nuclear reactor specialist Ken Bergeron. He did research on nuclear reactor accident simulation for Sandia National Laboratories in New Mexico. Well, uh, l let's start talking about where this lies between Three Mile Island and Chernobyl. I mean, they say five out of seven, seven out of seven, and somewhere in between, but there's a huge gulf in between. Where are we at this juncture right now? Well, the accident hasn't progressed to the point that uh, the reactor core uh, has uh, been released from the uh, pr pressure vessel, and, and that makes it far less bad than Chernobyl. Uh, and, uh, but on the other hand, uh, it's a lot worse than Three Mile Island uh, because, for one thing, there's three reactors involved. For another, uh, since the containments uh, at these reactors are are a lot smaller and, and uh, less capable than the Three Mile Island containment. They have had to vent a uh, considerable m amount of reactivity in the process of depressurizing the containment. So, so there's been a great deal more release. Yeah, well, Chernobyl was, as I said, insanity because they didn't even have a containment structure. Obviously, the Japanese have containment structures here and they have held so far. But what happens if there is a meltdown? Then would it approach anything near Chernobyl or, or still that wouldn't be the case? Well, in, you know, in terms of spectacular energetic events, it will never be anything like, none of these reactors will be anything like Chernobyl. Uh, they don't have the uh, mechanism for that neutronic excursion, that atomic bomb-like e explosion that occurred there. But in terms of health effects, uh, I'm sorry to say it could be worse. Uh, really? Having, yeah, having the release. Is that? Uh, having the release at ground level as opposed to this uh, uh, incredible blast followed by a hot fire at Chernobyl um, 
will mean that the uh, radioactive material is uh, uh, much more, you know, where people live uh, at ground level. Uh, it would depend a lot on the weather, uh, the, the wind directions. Um, um, but it was actually fortunate for the Chern Chernobyl event that so much of that radioactive material got launched very, very high into the atmosphere, to the stratosphere, in fact. That's and, really and, interesting. And, I had not yeah. heard that before. So what does it mean to be uh, at the ground level? Does that mean you can spread more or it goes in deeper and then you can't re then you can't you have to relocate the people because they can't settle there? What exactly is the implication of that? Well, the, the, the biggest fear is that it will be lofted, the radioactive cloud will be lofted high enough that it can be transported to various population centers and then settle. Uh, either by gravity or through precipitation, rain or snow, uh, and, and therefore end up having a very large dose right where people, uh, a very large deposition right where people live. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're, we're talking uh, about this before the reactor vessel has even failed, but uh, so it's real speculation, but it, it could be very, very bad. Uh, obviously, especially if it goes towards Tokyo, where there's such an enormous number of people. Now, at this point, there's apparently a fire at reactor number four. How does that affect right. all of this? Well, you know, that fire and the, the events that are occurring in the spent fuel pool in reactor number four uh, would be an important uh, worldwide newsworthy event all by itself. Uh, and uh, the amount of radioactivity in, in these fuel rods is almost as much as, as are in the fuel rods that are in the reactors. Uh, so uh, uh, having a fire as a result of the draining down of that uh, uh, pool uh, is, is a horrifically dangerous event. So tell me about what your current assessment is. I mean, given all these fires, given, you know, we were so worried about what was going to happen in reactor number two, and it turns out something terrible did happen this morning. Now reactor four, which we didn't even expect, is on fire and, and the roof is cracked. At this point, what's the likelihood that we hit the worst case scenario? Well, in terms of the three reactors that were operational and that have had problems uh, being kept cool, uh, we, we, we have to hope that the operators uh, continue to be successful in getting water into those uh, pressure vessels, water over the core, uh, and, and, and continue to do so for, for many days. Uh, that's what's going to be necessary to keep that, that core damage progression from continuing. Uh, if, if they are unsuccessful, if they don't get enough water in any one of these reactors, and the, the core material slumps to the bottom of the vessel. Uh, that's a, called an uncoolable configuration. And uh, that decay heat in that fuel could cause the fuel to melt and eventually penetrate the uh, reactor vessel of uh, steel. So is that still, is that, would you call that possible? Would you call it likely? I know we're f far away and, and it's hard to determine from, from here, but I, I think a lot of people are, are wondering how bad can this get? So where do you think it stands right now? Well, I mean, I, I shouldn't uh, uh, say that it's likely. It's, it's very hard to tell. We don't know where the water level is. Uh, it is possible. It's uh, uh, a lot more possible than I thought it was going to be two days ago. Wow, that's interesting. It's getting worse in a lot of ways. So, Ken, how about the 50 to 70 people there uh, right now trying to put out those fires and putting the water on, et cetera? How much trouble are they in with uh, being exposed to that much radiation? Well, uh, recently there was a, a contingent of uh, 800 uh, workers at the facility, and uh, uh, Tokyo Electric made the decision to uh, pull most of those people once the radiation levels got to some of the levels that have been seen. Uh, leaving 50 behind, no doubt volunteers, uh, who, who knew that they were taking their lives, putting their lives on the line, and uh, I have a little doubt that uh, many of those people will die, and, and, and wow. that's a sacrifice that they probably knew they were making. You know, that's an amazing story. We're going to come back to that story because those people are, are beyond brave. They are now thinking of bringing in reinforcements and they're looking at retired people to come in. And you see the clear implication of that, partly because they're experts, partly because they're volunteering at, at, at that stage. It's, it's an amazing right. story of heroism. Ken Ber Bergeron, we really appreciate your expertise tonight. Uh, thank you for coming right. out and talking to us.